Hello everyone, this is Rabbit Ears Vlog, and welcome to my commentary video series. This is my 50th video celebration, and in today's commentary video, I will discuss about the earlier part of the history of the popular children's channel, Nickelodeon. This commentary will focus on Nickelodeon during the 1970s through 2004. And after this video, I will try to post up a part 2 to this commentary, which will discuss about the later years of Nickelodeon. On December 1st, 1977, Nickelodeon actually started out being called the Pinwheel Network, which was the cable channel that broadcasted mainly children's programming. However, on April 1st, 1979, the Pinwheel Network was renamed Nickelodeon and started expanding its audience. Early on, Nickelodeon's logo was in the shape of a pinball with the Nickelodeon letters having rainbow colors. However, afterwards, the Nickelodeon pinball logo was replaced by the classic orange splat logo, which had defined Nickelodeon for many years. Later, Nickelodeon aired one of his most inspirational shows called You Can't Do That on Television, which was a Canadian sketch comedy show that introduced the famous green slime that was featured on Nickelodeon's later shows, like Double Dare and Figure It Out. In 1985, Nickelodeon created a new nighttime blog called Nick at Night, which usually aired older shows such as I Love Lucy and The Brady Bunch. In 1988, Nickelodeon had their first Kids' Choice Awards show, which also aired in the same year as Nick Jr., which was a block aim at preschoolers. Throughout the 1970s and the 1980s, Nickelodeon mainly broadcasted cartoons from other countries such as Britain and Canada. It wasn't until 1991 when Nickelodeon decided to create their own brand of cartoons called Nicktoons. The first Nicktoon to ever air on Nickelodeon was Doug, which was created by Jim Jenkins, and it aired on August 11, 1991. On the same day, Rugrats, which was created by Klasky Supo, and Ren and Stimpy, which was created by John Kay, premiered at a later time from Doug. And due to the huge success of these three Nicktoons, Nickelodeon decided to make more Nicktoons throughout the 90s. In 1993, Rocko's More Life was created by Joe Murray and it premiered. And in 1994, Auburn Monsters, which is the second Nicktoon created by Klasky Supo, premiered this year after Rocko's More Life. Around this time, original Nicktoons Doug and Rugrats were canceled while Ren and Stippy was the only original Nicktoon to continue running until 1996. In 1996, Nickelodeon aired two new Nicktoons, which included Hey Arnold, created by Craig Bartlett, and Kablam. And in 1997, the following year, Nickelodeon introduced a new Nicktoon called The Angry Beavers, which was created by Mitch Scour. Even more Nicktoons were created around 1998 as there were three new Nicktoons introduced, which included Oh Yeah Cartoons, which was a series that was equivalent to Cartoon Network's The What a Cartoon Show, The Wild Thornberries, which was the third Nicktoon created by Klasky Supo, and Cat Dog, which was created by Peter Hannon. In 1999, Nickelodeon put out two new Nicktoons, which included Rocket Power, which is the fourth Nicktoon created by Klasky Supo, and SpongeBob SquarePants, created by Steven Hillenburg. Throughout the 90s, Rugrats became Nickelodeon's most successful Nicktoon, especially after it was revived back in 1997. In 1998, Rugrats earned their own movie called The Rugrats Movie, making Rugrats the first Nicktoon to have a movie, and because of the huge success of The Rugrats Movie, Rugrats ended up having two more movies, which included Rugrats in Paris and Rugrats Go Wild. Unfortunately, in 2004, Rugrats was officially canceled, making the show one of the longest-running Nicktoons of Nickelodeon with a total of 12 seasons. Even though Rugrats was canceled, the show ended up having a spin-off series called All Grown Up, which was inspired by an episode of Rugrats called All Grown Up, and it premiered on Nickelodeon in 2003. Rugrats then became the first Nicktoon to have a spin-off series to air on Nickelodeon, since Disney's Doug, which was the spin-off of Doug, aired on the ABC channel, and Ren and Stimpy's Adult Party cartoon, which was the spin-off of Ren and Stimpy, aired on Spike TV. Unfortunately, even though All Grown Up ran for five seasons, the show was often not well liked by the fans of Rugrats. It wasn't long afterwards when SpongeBob SquarePants became the next most popular link to Nickelodeon after the cancellation of Rugrats. After the success of the Nicktoons in 1991, Nickelodeon decided to create a primetime block on Saturday nights in 1992 called SNCC. SNCC introduced live action shows such as Carlissa Explains It All. Roundhouse, All That, Keen McHale, The Amanda Show, and Are You Afraid of the Dark? In 2000, Nickelodeon introduced a new blog called Teen Nick, which aired every Sunday evenings, and in 2004, SNCC was renamed Teen Nick. Just like Rugrats throughout the 90s, 
All that became Nickelodeon's most successful live-action series, and helped set up the acting careers of Kenan Thompson, Kel Mitchell, Amanda Bynes, and Jamie Lynn Spears. All that premiered in 1994, which was the same year that You Can't Do That on Television, the show that inspired Nickelodeon, ended its run after running for 13 years, and all that ended up being the new sketch comedy for Nickelodeon. All that also helped spin off several other shows, which included The Amanda Show, Keen and Kel, Drake and Josh, Zoe 101, and iCarly. Unfortunately, in 2005, all that was officially canceled, making it one of the longest-running live-action shows on Nickelodeon, with a total of 10 seasons. In 1996, Nickelodeon decided to create their own movies, and named it Nickelodeon Movies. The first movie Nickelodeon created was Harriet the Spy, which starred Michelle Trackerberg and Rosie O'Donnell. After the success of Harriet the Spy, Nickelodeon decided to make more movies, which included Good Burger, The Rugrats Movie, Snow Day, and the Spongebob Squarepants movie. Even though there were many successful shows that ran on Nickelodeon, many shows suffer controversies due to the content that some shows have portrayed. One of the shows that caused the most controversy in the early years of Nickelodeon was Red and Stimpy. Red and Stimpy was one of the original three Nicktoons that premiered on Nickelodeon. However, many parents complained about the content of the show, stating that Red and Stimpy was often too violent and inappropriate for the smaller audience. This caused Nickelodeon to fire the original creator of the show, and then taking over the show in this later run, until it was officially cancelled in 1996. However, the controversy doesn't end there, as a later Nicktoon called The Angry Beavers had also suffered controversy, despite the show's popularity in the late 90s. The controversy that served from The Angry Beavers was based around the episode Alley Oops, when Norbert tells Daggett to shut up, and a parent complained about Norbert's use of the word shut up. Nickelodeon decided to bleep out the phrase shut up in response, but unfortunately this caused even more controversy when many parents believed that Norma really did say a strong curse word during that scene. More controversy stemmed from the Angry Beavers when the show was coming to a close and the creators decided to make an episode called Bye Bye Beavers, which explained to the audience about what would happen to Norman and Daggett once the show was cancelled. In 2001, Invader Zim, which was another new Nicktoon that premiered on Nickelodeon and was created by John Vosk, also suffered many controversies when it premiered. Many parents complained that the show was too dark and disturbing for small children, especially the episode's Dark Harvest, where Zim steals organs from other kids, and best is friends when Zim yanks the eyeballs out of a kid's head. This then caused Invader Zim to be cancelled after two seasons, much to the anger of the fans. To add more insult to injury, in 2004, a majority of the 90s shows which included Rugrats, Hey Arno, and Rocket Power, were all cancelled, with the exception of Spongebob Squarepants, which is the only 90s Nicktoon running to this very day. The cancellation of many of the 90s shows in 2004 had caused many fans of 90s Nickelodeon to steer away from the channel. Well, that's my commentary on the first half of the history of Nickelodeon. I would have discussed more about the success of Spongebob Squarepants, but it didn't really gain too much popularity until much later on, so I will cover that in part 2 of Nickelodeon's history in another commentary video. Also, if you want me to do a commentary on a TV channel, a company, or anything for my 75th video, then feel free to comment below and let me know so I can see what I can do about it. This is Rabbit Blog, and I'll see you later.